Kuda. Masata Moga de Nina. Hola, seniors and senoritas. Are you on your dear and near safe and sound? It's activist Kamprecha, Professor S. Suresh, back with a bang for my 64th video in process for publication on YouTube today, 18th of August 2020. Topic for discussion today is design of material handling systems, system for organizations. Actually, material handling is part and parcel of plant layout, facilities planning and all. Since the topic is big, I am covering it separately. You must have seen my previous video on plant layout, right? Okay. Site location plan. Material handling involves short distance movement within the confines of a building or between a building and a transportation vehicle. It uses a wide range of manual, semi automated, and automated equipment and includes consideration of the protection, storage, and control of materials through their manufacturing, warehousing, distribution, consumption, and disposal. Material handling can be used to create time and place utility through the handling, storage and control of waste as distinct from manufacturing which creates form utility by changing the shape, form and makeup of material. Material handling is integral to the design of most production systems since the efficient flow of material between the activities of a production system is heavily dependent on the arrangement of the activities. If two activities are adjacent to each other, the material might easily be handed from one activity to another. If activities are in sequence, a conveyor can move the material at low cost. If activities are separated, more expensive industrial trucks or overhead conveyors are required for transport. The high cost of using an industrial truck for material transport is due to both the labor cost of the operator and the negative impact on the performance of a production system. When multiple units of a material are combined into a single transfer batch in order to reduce the number of trips required for transport. A yeah, unit load is either a single unit of an item or multiple units of arranged or restricted so that it can be handled as a single unit and maintain the integrity. All of you must have seen the pallet and uh, containers and all that. Although granular, liquid and gaseous, ga gaseous materials can be transported in bulk, they can also be contain contained in the unit loads using bags, drums and cylinders. Advantages of unit loads are that more items can be handled at the same time and that it enables the use of standardized material handling equipment. Disadvantages of unit loads include the negative impact of batching on production system performance and the cost of returning empty. Unit empty containers pallets to the point of origin. Manual handling refers to the use of workers hands to move in individual containers by lifting, lowering, filling, emptying or carrying them. It can expose workers to physical conditions that can lead to injuries that represent a large percentage of the war of over half a million cases of musculoskeletal disorders reported in the US each year and often involve strains and strains to the lower back, shoulders and upper limbs. Ergonomic improvements can be used to modify manual handling tasks to reduce injury. These improvements can include reconfiguring the task and using positioning equipment like lift, tilt, turn tables, hoist, balances and manipulators to reduce reaching and bending. The National Institute for Occupational Safety and Health NIOSH 1991 revised lifting equation can be used to evaluate manual lifting tasks. Under ideal circumstances, the manual recommended weight for manual lifting to avoid back injuries is 23.13 kg. Using the exact conditions of the lift, asymmetrical lifts and objects that are difficult to grasp, fixed multipliers are used to reduce the maximum recommended weight for less than ideal lifting tasks. Whenever technically and economically feasible equipment can be used to reduce and sometimes replace the need to ha manually handle material. Most existing material handling equipment is only semi-automated because a human operator is needed for tasks like loading, unloading and driving that are difficult and are too costly to fully automate. However, ongoing, it is called mechanization there. However, ongoing advances in sensing, machine intelligence and robotics have made it possible to fully automate an increasing number of handling tasks. In many cases, automated equipment is not flexible as a human operator both with respect to not being able to do a particular task 
as well as a human and not being able to do be as easily redeployed to do the other tasks as needs them. Manual material handling ranges from movement of raw material, working progress, finished goods, rejected scraps, packing material, etc. These materials are of different shape and sizes as well as weight. Material handling is a systematic and scientific method of moving, packing and storing of material in appropriate and suitable location. The main objectives of material handling are it should be able to able to determine approximate distance to be covered, facilities, facili facilitate the reduction in material damage as to improve quality, reducing overall manufacturing time by designing efficient material movement, improve material flow control through creation and encouragement of safe and hazard free work condition, improve productivity and efficiency, better utilization of time and equipment. It is critical for manufacturing organization to identify importance of material handling principle as a critical steps in promoting job improvement process. Manual material handling significantly inc increases health asset for the workers in from lower back injuries. In the current competitive and globalized environment, it is important to control cost and reduce time in material handling. An efficient material handling process promotes design of proper facility layout promotes development of method which improves and simplifies the work process it improves overall production activity efficient material handling reduces total cost of production material handling principles are orientation principle it encourages study of all available system relationship before moving towards preliminary planning the study includes looking at existing methods problems etc planning principle it establishes a plan which includes basic requirements Desirable alternates and planning for contingency backup system principle. It integrates handling and storage facilities, which is cost effective into integrated system design. Unit load principle handle product in a unit load as large as possible. Unit loads are very easy to handle because its uniform shape weight is also approximately same. Space utilization principle it encourage effective utilization of the space available. Standardization principle, it encourages standardization of handling methods and equipment. Ergonomic principle, it recognizes human capabilities and limitation by design, effective handling equipment. Energy principle, it considers consumption of energy during material handling. Ecology principle, it encourages minimum impact upon the environment during material handling. Mechanization principle, it encourages mechanization of handling process whereby wha wherever possible as to encourage efficiency. Flexibility principle, encourages of methods and equipment which are possible to utilize in all types of conditions. Simplification principle, encourages simplification of methods and process by removing unnecessary movements. Gravity principle, encourages uses of gravity principle in movement of goods, especially in multi-story buildings and all that. Safety principle encourages provision for safe handling equipment according to safety rules and uh, regulations. Computerization principle encourages computerization of material handling and storage systems. System flow principle encourages integration of data flow into with the physical material flow. Layout principle encourages preparation of operational sequence of all systems available. Cost principle encourages cost benefit analysis of all solutions available. Maintenance principle encourages preparation of plan for preventive maintenance and scheduled repairs, scheduled services rather. Obsolescence principle encourages preparation of equipment policy so as to enjoy, enjoy appropriate economic advantage. Material handling operations are designed based upon principles as discussed above. Material handling equipment consists of cranes, conveyors, and industrial trucks. Material handling equipment is mechanical equipment used for movement of storage, movement, storage, control and protection of materials, goods and products throughout the process of manufacturing, distribution, consumption and disposal. Different types of handling equipment can be classified into four major categories, transport equipment, positioning equipment, unit load formation equipment and storage equipment. 
transport equipment is used to move material from one location to another while positioning equipment is used to manipulate material at a single location. The major subcategories of transport equipment are conveyors, cranes and industrial trucks. Materials can also be transported manually using no equipment. Conveyors are used when material is to be moved frequently between specific points over a fixed path and when there is a sufficient flow volume to justify a fixed conveyor investment. You know, even airports use conveyors quite extensively for baggage movement and all that. Different types of conveyors can be characterized by the type of product being handled, unit load or bulk load, the conveyor's location in floor or on floor or overhead and whether or not loads can accumulate on the conveyor. Accumulation allows the intermittent movement of each unit of material transported along the conveyor while all units move simultaneously and conveyors without accumulation capability. Yeah, conveyors are used in uh, malls, shopping malls, even commercial buildings, uh, airports. Of course, there they are called as escalators. Uh. For example, while both the roller and flat belt are unit load on floor, on floor conveyors, the roller provides accumulation capability, while the flat belt does not. Similarly, both the power and free and trolley are unit load overhead conveyors with a power and free design to include an extra track in order to provide the accumulation capability lacking in the trolley conveyor. Examples of bulk handling conveyors include the magnetic belt, trough belt, the bucket and screw conveyors, a sortation conveyor system is used for merging, identifying, inducting and separating products to be conveyed to specific destinations and typically consists of flat belt roller and chute conveyor segments together with the various movable arms and our pop-up wheels and chains that detect, push or pull products to different destinations. Cranes are used to transport loads over, over variable horizontal and vertical paths within a restricted area and when there is insufficient flow volume such that the use of a conveyor cannot be justified. Crates provide more flexibility in movement than can conveyors because the loads handled can be more varied with respect to the shape and weight. Cranes provide less flexibility in movement than industrial trucks because they only can operate within a restricted area though some can operate on a portable basis. Most cranes utilize trolley and racks for horizontal movement and hoist for vertical movement although manipulators can be used if precise positioning of the load is required. The most common cranes include the jib, bridge, gantry and stacker cranes. Industrial trucks are trucks that are not licensed to travel on public roads. Commercial trucks are licensed to travel on public roads. Industrial trucks are used to move industrial Industrial trucks are used to move materials over variable paths and when there is sufficient or insufficient or intermittent flow volume such that the use of a conveyor cannot be justified. They provide more flexibility in movement than conveyors and cranes because there are no restrictions on the area covered and they provide vertical movement if the truck has lifting capabilities like the forklift truck. Different types of industrial trucks can be characterized by whether or not they are folks for handling pallets, provide power or require manual lifting and travel capabilities, allow the operator to ride on the truck or require the operator to walk with the truck during travel. We call them as platform trucks, provide load stacking capability and whether or not they can operate in narrow aisles. Hand trucks, usually carts and dollies, the simplest type of industrial truck, cannot transport or stack pallets is not powered and requires the operator to walk. A pallet jack which cannot stack a pallet uses front wheels mounted inside the end of forks that extend to the floor as the pallet is only lifted to clear the floor for subsequent travel. A counterbalance lift truck can transport and stack pallets and allows the operator to ride on the truck. The weight of the vehicle and the operator behind the front wheels of truck counterbalance weight of the load. The front wheels act as a fulcrum or pivot point. Narrow aisle trucks usually require that the operator stand up while riding in order to reduce the truck's turning radius. 
reach mechanisms and outrigger me arms that saddle and support a load can be used in addition to to the just the counterbalance of the truck on a turret truck turret it can rotate you know that turret the folks rotate during stacking eliminating the need of the truck itself to turn in narrow aisles an order picker allows the operator to be to be lifted with the load like the scissors lift table okay allows the operator to be lifted with the load to allow for less than parallel load picking automated guided vehicles agvs or industrial trucks that can transport loads without requiring a human operator an electric truck is a small battery powered and pedestrian operated machine capable of either pushing or pulling human operator a significantly heavier load than itself commonly used to assist in moving smaller loads where larger equipment would struggle manual handling equipment such such pallet trucks trolleys and sack trucks sack trucks can be an essential part of any material handling a yard ram sometimes called a mobile yard ram is a movable metal ram for loading and unloading of vehicles a yard ram is placed at the back of a vehicle to provide access for forklifts to ascend the ramp using a yard ramp for vehicle loading or unloading allows the work to be carried out by a forklift positioning equipment is used to handle material at a single location it can be used at a workplace to feed orient or load unload or otherwise manipulate material so that they are in correct correct positioning for subsequent handling machining transport or storage as compared to manual handling the use of positioning equipment can raise the productivity of each worker when the frequency of handling is high even for surgeries they are using positioning equipment you know the with the robotic arms improve product quality and limit damage to materials and equipment when the item handle is heavy or awkward to hold and damage is likely through human error uh, in attention it can reduce fatigue and injuries when the environment is hazardous or inaccessible in many cases positioning equipment is required for and can be justified by the ergonomic requirements of the task examples of cushion in include equipment include lift tilt turn tables hoist balancers manipulators and industrial robots manipulators act as muscle ma multipliers by counterbalancing the weight of a load so that the op operator lifts only a small portion of the load's weight and they fill the gap between hoist and industrial robot they can be used for a wider range of cushioning tasks than hoist and are more flexible than industrial robots due to the use of manual control they can be powered manually electrically or pneumatically and a manipulator's end effector can be equipped with mechanical grippers vacuum grippers electromagnetic grippers or other tooling unit load formation equipment is used to restrict materials so that they maintain their integrity when handled a single load during transport and storage if materials are self restraining then they can be formed into a unit load with uh, no equipment examples of unit load formation equipment includes as i said before pallets skids slip sheets tote bags bins baskets cartons bags and crates and containers also nowadays in airports ports and all they are using containers you know the sea ports airport a pallet is a platform made of wood the most common paper plastic rubber or metal with enough clearance beneath the it stops or face to enable the inner insertion of forks for subsequent lifting purposes a slip sheet is a thick sheet of paper corrugated fiber or plastic upon which a load is placed and has straps that can be grabbed by special push or pull lift truck attachments they are used in place of a pallet to reduce weight and volume but loading and unloading is lower storage equipment is used for holding or buffering materials over a period of time the design of each type of storage equipment along with its use in barrow design represents a trade off between minimizing handling costs by making material easily accessible and maximizing the utilization of cubic space if materials are stacked directly on the floor then no storage equipment is required but on average each different item in storage will have to stack will have to stack only half full to increase the cubic space utilization storage racks can be used to allow multiple stacks of different items to occupy the same floor space at different levels the use of racks becomes preferable to floor storage as the number of units per item requiring storage decreases similarly the depth at which units of an item are stored affects the cubic space utilization in proportion to the number of units per item requiring storage pallets can be stored using single and double deep racks 
when the number of units per item is small, while pallet flow and pushback racks, racks are used when the units per item are mid-range and flow storage or drive-in racks are used when the number of units per item is large, with the drive-in providing support for pallet loads that cannot be stacked on top of each other. Individual cartons can either be picked from pallet loads or can be stored in carton flow racks, which are designed to allow first-in, first-out FIFO carton access. For individual P storage, bin shelving, storage drawers, carousels, and A frames can be used. An automatic storage retrieval system is an ASRS is an integrated computer controlled storage system that combines storage medium, transport mechanism, and controls with various levels of automation for fast and accurate random storage of products and materials. The four main categories of material handling equipment include storage, engineered systems, industrial trucks and uh, bulk material handling. Storage equipment is used for non-automated examples which are grouped into with the engineer system. Storage equipment is used to hold or buffer materials during downtimes or times when they are not being transported. These periods could refer to a temporary process during long-term transportation or long-term storage designed to allow the build-up of stock. The majority of storage equipment refers to pallets, shelves, or racks into onto which the materials may be stacked in an orderly manner to avoid transportation or consumption. Many companies have investigated increased efficiency possibilities in storage equipment by designing proprietary packaging that allows materials or products of a certain type to conserve space while in inventory. Racks such as pallet racks, drive through or drive-in racks, push back racks and sliding racks are a basic but important method of storage, saving floor space while keeping the contents accessible. Stacking frames are stackable like blocks, as the name implies. They allow crushable pallets of inventory, such as containers of liquid to be stacked to save space without damage, shelves, bins and drawers, shelves, another basic storage method, are less open than racks. Used with bins and drawers, they, they are more able to keep smaller and more difficult to manage materials and products stored and organized. Shelving types can include boltless, cantilever, revolving, and tied on. Mesonines, a type of indoor platform, help to create more floor, floor space in a warehouse or other storage building for offices or more storage. Typical types include modular, movable rack supporter, building supporter, and freestanding versions. Even in libraries, you may have seen the mezzanine floor, or even in shops. Work assist tooling enables safe and efficient product handling across numerous industries and applications that require the movement of products, enhancing the the efficiency of assembly and manufacturing operations. Engineer systems cover a variety of units that work cohesively to enable storage and transportation. They are often automated. A good example of engineer system is ASRS that I mentioned before, which is a large automated organization structure involving racks, aisles, and shelves accessible by a shuttle system or retriever. The shuttle system is a mechanized heavy pickup that can be used by a worker or can perform fully automated functions to quickly, quickly locate a storage item's location and quickly retrieve it for other users. This kind of equipment is used in uh, farms and all that. That's why it is called as a, what is it? Cherry picker. Other types of engineered systems include conveyor systems can come in a variety of types depending on what they are meant to transport, including vibrating overhead chain, Vertical and apron conveyors, automated guided vehicles are AGV, are independent computer operated trucks that transport loads along a predetermined path with sensors and detectors to avoid bumping into anything. Nowadays, we are talking about anonymous vehicles uh, and all that, right? Not autonomous, I'm sorry. Not anonymous, autonomous, without driver, driverless. Industrial trucks, material handling trucks refer to the different types of transportation items and vehicles used to move materials and products in material handling. These transportation devices can include small hand-operated trucks, pallet jacks, and various kinds of forklifts. These trucks have a variety of characteristics to make them suitable for different operations. Some trucks have forks, as in a forklift, or a flat surface with which to lift items, while some trucks require a separate piece of equipment for loading. Trucks can also be manual or powered lifts, and operation can be walk or ride, requiring a user to manually push them or to ride along on the truck. A stack truck can be used to stack items while a non-stack truck is typically used for transportation and not for loading. There are many types of industrial trucks, hand trucks, uh, 
one of the most basic piece of material handling equipment feature a small platform to set the edge of a heavy object on and a long handle to use for leverage whenever whatever is being moved must be tipped so that it rests on the handles and it is carried at the tilt to its destination. Pallet trucks also known as pallet jacks are a type of truck specifically for pallets. So you slide into a pallet and lift it up by it or move it to move it. Pallet trucks come in both manual and electrical types, walkie stackers, transport and lift pallets like a forklift though they don't include a place for the operator to ride in. They come in both powered and manual versions. Platform trucks are hand trucks loaded to the ground with a white platform tra for transporting goods. Order pickers lift the operator as several feet above the ground on a platform so that they can retrieve or store goods on high shelves like the scissors lift as I said before. They are used even for street light uh, replacement and all that. Side loaders, also known as very narrow aisle trucks, are meant to lift in a narrow, narrow varo aisle as they can load objects from different directions. They are also good for long, awkward products that need moving. Many types of AGVs discussed above shuttle product along a road automatically without human guidance. Bulk, bulk material handling refers to the storing, transportation, and control of materials in loose bulk form. These materials can include food, liquid or minerals among others. Even in power plants to move the coal you must have seen, conveyors are widely used. Generally, these pieces of equipment deal with items in loose form such as conveyor belts or elevators designed to move large quantities of material or in package form though through the use of drums and hoppers. Conveyors as mentioned above come in a very wide variety of types for different types of bulk material. Stackers which are usually automated pile bulk material onto stockpiles moving between two points along rails in a yard. Reclaimers are the opposite of stackers, retrieving materials from stockpiles, some using bucket wheels to carry the material, while others are scrapper, scraper or portal style. Bucket elevators, also known as grain legs, use buckets attached to a rotating chain or belt to carry material vertically. Grain elevators are tall buildings, specifically for gr storing grain. They include equipment to convey the grain to the top of the elevator where it is centered for processing. Hoppers are funnel shaped containers that allow material to be poured or dumped from one container to another. Unlike a funnel, though hoppers can hold material until it is needed, then release it. Silos are generally large storage structures for bulk materials though they don't necessarily include the equipment to convey the material to the top of the structure like grain elevators. Silos are used in uh, different places. Even uh, milk diaries and all you must have seen the silos uh, are for food grain storage in uh, Food Corporation of India Godons. Uh. Different varieties include tower, bunker and bag, bag silos. Developed countries are using unmanned aerial vehicles uh, also known as drones for material movement within the factories. Besides drones are used for delivery by companies like Amazon. Some restaurants hotels are also using drones for supply of food from kitchen to customers tables. Robots are also used for material handling besides operations and industries especially hazardous operations and by defense in warfare. All organizations need to utilize contemporary technology to the best possible extent for ultimate success, effectively for improvement of productivity, quality and cost reduction. Customization also known as adaptation is essential for ultimate success of any organization. Debates, discussion on topics like this can go on forever. Anyhow, let me call it a day. We'll meet again real soon. Some of the statements used expressed are solely in mind based on <coughs> limited knowledge gain over six decades always watch these videos with closed caption for absolute hundred percent comprehension as by my sincere recommendation zillion times so far i know i rushed through to complete the presentation within 20 minutes max which is not possible nowadays since i make honest attempts to cover the selected topic more elaborately including so many intricate fine details referring a wide variety of sources in particular wikipedia quite extensively besides articles and books published recently I am really surprised uh, by Wikipedia. They must have put in a lot of effort, time in uh, collating so much information on anything. In, it's all authentic information too. They cite the references. In addition, I had my own salt and pepper and masala based on my personal experience so far in my life. 
and also intuition stayed home as much as possible to maintain social distancing attributed to the pandemic novel COVID-19 and prolong your lifespan. Lead a healthy life. God alone can put a stop to natural and unnatural events, maybe bio war, cyber war, events like pandemics which may lead to apocalypse and extinction of all sentient species on earth for no fault of those. All the best. Rest in peace and harmony.